Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the finest Dawn of War unification cast this side of East Yorkshire. And today I've got two games for you. The first game being a 2 versus 2 on Saint Square. Playing on team 2 as the Salamanders, we've got Archangel. As Comrade and Ally in Arms, we've got Moonkey playing as the Chaos Space Marines. And on team 1, playing as the World Eaters, we've got Runs with Spoon. And we've got Storm playing as the Space Marines. This is very exciting. We don't normally get to see some blooming World Eaters. So I'd be quite keen to see how these guys go. They've got two or maybe two, two or three kind of interesting openings that they've got for them. They've got the close combat orientated throw raptors at people until they die. They've got a long range opening and they've also got some blooming tech nonsense that they can also have access to. So quite exciting stuff to see how things are going on. Like I said at the beginning of the, of the cast, there is two games in here as this game is quite short. And I've got a relatively short game in the back burners that I've been waiting to do for quite some time. So but hey, why not? Why not give it a crack? Why not give it a go? And all that stuff. Now, what are you going for? Yeah, you're going to go for Devastation Chambers. So that is the ranged um, focus for the World Eaters, which is quite interesting because you don't normally see them go for that. It's usually, like I say, just Raptors going out and about the place. So very cool stuff. And it's quite a small map as well. So probably you'd actually need the Raptors to get over there fairly quickly because you're practically next door neighbors. You can have a go around here for Relics on either side, which is what's happening. Don't have a storm. Fighting scouts and scouts action. Scouts for Archangel will be a little bit chunkier. A little bit slower though. We do a bit more damage, but we do have four scouts in total. Going for those all-important sniper rifles as well. So we'll be able to take out Archangel's uh, scouts. But actually, going snipers. Not entirely sure if that's the wise thing to go, considering that if you're next door to Salamanders, you what they either go for the Thunder Fire Cannons, which is exactly what they're doing. Vehicle armor, so the snipers won't do anything against them. Or... Regular Space Marines, which is heavy infantry. But hey-ho, over on top of here, we've got cultists smacking around the Demon Host. Alt of Court about to be popped up, which does, I do believe, in its Tier 1s, able to do some AoE damage on a one-off, although it does da do damage to allies as well. Allies fighting near it do gain an increase in health regeneration, so they're able to fight close combat for a little bit longer. Also, World Eaters gaining a bonus to their economy when engaging in melee combat. It's quite sweet. Although, again, going for the ranged combat option, I'm not sure if that helps them at all. I don't know if, that, I don't know if because of the Devastation Chambers, it also increased their economy in the range department, but hey hope -ho, that's fine. I've got a Core Knight Lord. Now, in theory, he should be able to thrash the Chaos Lord in close combat, but something tells me, I can't quite remember, but I do believe it's not actually that excellent in close combat. I mean, what, he's got 42 and 47. I mean, we'll, we'll see how they go up about each other, but he's already taken a fair bit of damage to himself. But as you can see, regardless, he's, he's been absolutely smited. He's doing very little. So he's going to run away like a baby back bitch. Down this side, scouts scaring away these scouts, but they've got the bigger guns. Well, the Thunder Fire Cannon will be coming over. If they send heavy cover, will that reduce the amount of incoming damage? It will, but... By how much? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah. There's a fair bit of damage reduction. I've got some regular old space moons coming over. We'll probably sort, sort this Thunder Fire Cannon out. I've got vehicle armor, but it's very low on health, so it can be focused down. Scouts over here not going to invest too much into going too far forward. But yeah, most space moons also in heavy cover as well, so we'll be able to resist the forward advances of that Thunder Fire Cannon. And here we come with the Teeth of Corn. They're the ranged option. Now, hang on, wait a minute. Oh, that's a bit weird. Uh, their, their, their ranged weapon upgrades are for Tier 2. And before they get the weapon upgrades, they've got melee options. Well, that's odd. That's odd indeed. Well, I suppose it just goes to show Teeth of Corn, much like a blowjob, you don't really want them in the early game. Teeth are not advantageous in this situation by the looks of things. The demon host engaging in close combat. Last to get everyone back but before exploding into a fine red mist. Oh night lord. Does not want to mess with the regular old chaos lord. Apparently he's just got more burns for the close combat stuff. He is able to run around though like singed from League of Legends. They really want to chase him around when he's got that blasty thing on the background for him. Oh we've also got a blood pack command squad. A very fragile version of the Imperial Guards command squad. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know if, if um, 
The Weldy is in a very good situation or place at the moment in the meta. Unless, of course, they go for the melee opening. But Blood Pack Command been blast around everywhere. The Teeth of Corn, they're thinking, please give us some guns, oh mighty mighty. But no, we don't have any. It's just chain axes and a lot of yellow marines from Moonkey here. Well, I suppose with all this melee combat, I mean, what was your economy at the moment? If I can swap to you. Yeah, actually, you know what? That's that's fine economy for you. Does that mean that you're taking up into tier two? Do you need to get that blood apothecary? No, you aren't. You just got a lot of money there. So you've got the options too. And actually, maybe I should take everything back to Tifa Corn. Standing fairly firm here. Chaos Lord has been killed. And they're just not dying. They refuse to go down. Down over here, we are seeing Storm Space Marines pushing forward. So actually, Team here. 1 on the right-hand side, very aggressive. They've got the map control at the moment. Or at least they've got the pressure being applied. Chaos Lord replacement coming online. Heavy Bottle Turret being tucked away behind the upgrade listing post as well. And the corn, yeah. <laughs> Not going anywhere. This is this is so odd. So odd. I did not expect that. I thought we were going to be absolutely smited, but no. We do have Archangel. Are you in tier? Yeah, you're in tier two now, so coming out of that, raise the back. And over here, we don't have any tier twos for Mr. Storm over here, so this Razorback's going to have free reign for a little while at the very least. But the heavy cover over here will keep them safe and sound for a little while. Scout Marines over here capturing the Relic. We've got some infiltrated scouts for the Salamanders here. Chaos Lord going in for a second pass. Not quite able to keep up with these guys. Blood Pack Commander providing some sort of screening for the teeth. Mad on the dance floor. Absolutely love the Blood Pack Commander's voice lines. Taken from a game that came out many, many moons ago. The ah, oh, completely forget what it's called. Mark of Chaos. What a fantasy. Got the tier two coming on for Run for Spoon now. So hopefully these Steve Corn can finally get some canines on them. Raise back unsure which way to go really. Can't push too far this way as the Space Marines are hunkered down. Quite something severe. And they are now also taking up. So what's the plan? Rapier. Oh, yeah. Rapier armor destroyers for killings of the turrets. That makes sense. Also can do a fairly bit, good bit, piece of damage against the listing purse as well. Well, we do have Korn deciding, right, okay, well, if we can't necessarily take on the Chaos Space Marines, we can just keep on making more of them. Let's come down over here, see what we could do, but the Razorback will kill them quite quickly. No, it's not doing them any favours, is it? Unless, of course, Storm brings his boys over, but now been accosted by scouts armed with some combat shotguns that will be killed more or less straight away. A foolhardy attempt at combat. Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> a bit lacklustre, to be honest. Might be an idea just to wait for Tier 2 to finish. Get those anti-vehicle stuff on the goes. Ten core space means in one one squad here. What a beefy unit. There we are. The Puffer Carrier has been finished. Now they can get... Oh, they can also get an Ectoplasma Cannon, considering that they've also got a Relic. Going to go for an Aspiring Champion to rally the men around. That's supposed to be to have to fall back. Probably in the heavy cover again. No one really going for much manoeuvres around the centre here. It's interesting. As critical locations are bound to be had, as well as slag deposits. Razorbacks upon Razorbacks coming round either side. Storm over here got very little in the way of anti-vehicle stuff going on. He had the armour, he had the tier two. 
could have gone for some missile launches, but decided against it. Now losing all his strategic points. We'll have to see Runs with Spoon come on down. A Blood Pack Assassin. I don't think we've seen a Blood Pack Assassin before in this game. Let's have a quick scan so we can see her. There she is, covered in red. Don't know if you can quite see her. I'm able to get a, a back view or something. Look at that, she's got heads on hips. I think the hips are heads. Oh no, the torsos. The torsos. Even worse somehow. They're going to come down, see what they could do. Well, the teeth are not equipped with any, <laughs> any blooming heavy weaponry. You've got the economy for it, the runs with teeth. You can do it if you really want to. But deciding no, our bolt pistols will see us through this day. Nothing but faith in our god and faith in our pistols. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they can actually do it. I've been wrong before in this game. I've been wrong again. Got a force commander out. And the wonderful colours of the white scars. Also got the devastators. They've also got no. Oh, they've got multi melters. They're fine. They'll be able to assist. So fire and flames upon the Razorbacks. As these guys stand, being licked by the flames of the listening post. Cornet Lord goes down. And more Razorbacks on either side. Got a chaplain around for the health regen of the Devastators. And just a couple of auto cannons, man. That's all we want from yet. Moonkey going for a million and one Chaos Space Marines. Always going to go for a Chaos Rhino Transport. Just so we can come down and provide some support. Do have some core Berserkers. They're going to come down. Not sure what... Ah, there we go. They're going to go for the Tech Marine. Give him a spanking. Surrounding him and killing him. Good, quick, sharpish. And yeah, they've managed to kill the Razorbox on this side. Now focusing on listening post. Oh, Berserkers not settling for anything other than to draw the blood out of this Razorback. Okay, so when I, I imagine, yeah, you've got all the lads inside yet. Yeah. And the Berserkers are going to be turned into dead men. A lot of these structures getting in the way of our combat. Realistically, what can these guys do? Oh, the, the throw grenades, that's something that they can do. But even with a Razorback falling down, they're remarkably cheap. What a Honda Blue and 85 Green. And they've just got infinite amounts of boys inside those cursed rhinos. Yeah, this is not a happy situation. They're going to have to adapt to overcome. We've got another squad of Devastators. Oh, it's not the same squad. It looks like we've got a squad wipe there. Got a brand new squad over here. Transitioning into some vehicle play. What are we talking about? Maybe Hellfire Dreadnoughts for the anti-vehicle. Also the anti-infantry, because there's a there's a bit of berth. Some land speed of Tempest. I'm not sure. I think this is too far gone by now, unless Korn can do something. Building for Fever Plasma Turret. And a Berserker Dreadnought. Unless they start to put some pressure on these guys, but Helton's taking care of that one Dreadnought down there. Yeah, it seems a bit of an odd mix mashup of units from the World Eater's perspective. No real clear commitment on what kind of path to go for. They went for the range, but then didn't really take advantage of the ranged, op ranged options. Going for Corn Berserkers of all things. Then Berserker Dreadnoughts. I mean, they've got options for having oh, the, what's his face? It's not the Cornite Lord. It's a different guy. Like a Dark Mechanic kind of guy. Able to get like some service holes and stuff with big heavy bottles strapped to their shoulders. That's what you sometimes see with the Devastator Chamber opening. That wouldn't have been terrible. That wouldn't have been terrible at all. The teeth. 
being blown about by the exploding Demon Hurst. But knockback allows those guys to get back inside the Chaos Rhino. But the Cornite Marines, of all things, have gone for the Melter Guns. That's what they've done. Rhino Transport soon to go down, but... No, that's it. Cue the game, but it was nice to see the Wild Eaters. I haven't seen them for a while. But yeah, like I said, lack of, lack of commitment to, to one particular kind of um, build order, I imagine. And Snipers. Sniper on the Scouts. A lot of investment going on there, but not really what you want against the Salamanders, especially when they're going for the Thunderfire Cannon opening. So there we go, short and sweet. Let's move on to the second game of this evening. And here we are in game number two. It's one versus one, and it's on Blood River. We've got Custom King playing as the Chaos Space Marines, and we have got Vrax playing as the Imperial Guard. Vrax will be opening up with Triple Guardsman, a Tech Priest Engine Seer, a Plasma Generator, and a Infantry Command, whereas Custom King is going to go for a couple of Cultists and a Chaos Temple. Going for some Chaos Space Marines as well. Bit unusual, don't normally see this kind of opening. Uh, normally it's either Cultist Grenades... Or into a Chaos Lord. Maybe there's a Plasma Generator in there at some point. But maybe we're going to see a bit of a rush as this is a potential rush map. And Custom King is known for uh, enjoying a good rush build. So maybe it's just a case just sending in some Chaos Space Marines and killing as many Guardsmen as humanly possible. I imagine Vrax will be going for a... There we go, a Command Squad. And just as standard as one can uh, with this kind of faction on this kind of map. So yeah, so yep, there we go. Chaos Space Marines are going to run run straight forward. And strangely enough, they're, they're, they're red, much like the Weld Eaters that we saw earlier on. So maybe it's like double Weld Eaters, at least in the spirit of how they go about their things. But rushing Imperial Guard. Now, you've got to be a brave man to do it, because it's, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not the, the done thing, is rushing the Imperial Guard. I mean, fair play, maybe if you can stop the Tech Priest Engine Seers, Building up listing purse prevented their economy from getting online, but it's very hard to do considering that, I mean, they've got their commands where they can just jump inside. Like, if you try and kill a Tech Priest Engine see it, just to run inside and then hide until you go away. So, maybe that's not the way forward. We're going to see another Chaos Lord, well, Chaos Lord and another Chaos Space Marine squad. So, yep, no Plasma Generator neither, so it's very much just hardcore going in for it. Chaos Lord will certainly show these guys a thing or two in close combat, especially when being supported in ranged by the Chaos Space Marines. Only a couple of swipes, and the commander is taken out. Marines will have to run away as quick as they can. He's quite nimble for an old man. Quite swift on his old feetsies. So he will run as far and fast as he can. Of course, we'll watch as they go by. Over on this side, the Guardsmen will be accosted by the cultists. But, I mean, the Imperial Guard, they've got the blue money, they've got the green money. It's all incoming for them. So all they really have to do is just stand firm for a little while. And they'll certainly at least get the tech advantage much quicker than Custom King yet. But the commas are slicing open a kind of space marine, but there are a lot of them. And the one problem with the Imperial Guard is that their infantry in the early game, especially when standing in this negative cover, are just not going to stand up for very long. Got another Commissar over here. Commissar's amazing in close combat. You run inside, listing purse providing. Same level of fire as a fully upgraded Guardsman squad as well. Which should be firing. Oh, he's came out. The flanking Commissar. These guys are determined to kill the cultists. And there we go. Custom King now going to transition into playing the game regularly. It's got that plasma generator down. It's going to get some more Chaos Space Marines. It will take a while for those plasma generators to get him up into tier 2 money. These guardsmen, they're very brave. Don't know if this is what they wanted to do with their lives. But they are being led by their command squad. Outnumbered, outgunned. The guardsmen of all factions do not want to be the ones that are outnumbered. I mean, what, what one Chaos Space Marine is worth about maybe three guardsmen in DPS and in health? I mean, 
Quick maths, a bit rough on the mathematics there, but something like that, I think. Man's going to have to run all the way past these heavy bolt well, regular bolters. Psychic goes down. Can the command squad survive? Oh, it's going to be close. Uh, run through the heavy cover, but that will slow him down as well. It's a catch-22 situation. There's some more guardsmen arming themselves with some grenade launchers. Ah, the grenade launchers, that might help them a lot, actually, in this engagement, knocking these guys down. Might not be able to kill them all, but it'll certainly help them, especially as it will increase the overall range, well, the combat effective range of the squad. We'll fall back, going across the Rubicon. And there we go. Hopefully going to use that negative cover to their advantage here. Probably not what the Chaos Space Marines want. They'll try and take down the listening post, though. The double Tech Priest Engine Seers will be able to out-repair their DPS, I imagine. Now they're being peppered slowly by these grenade launchers. But no tier 2 for Vrex at the moment. He's had to spend a lot of his money on upgrading his guardsmen just to survive this sheer amount of lads. Gonna come as a 92 and 10 compared to 68 and 20. So actually, Custom King dedicating all his resources in the early game, but somehow coming out more or less on top, at least in the requisition department. But one Commissar just. Slicing his way slowly, but surely through this listening post. Chaos Space Marines resting and recuperating. Guardsmen on the wrong side of the tracks here. But well, they've now got the numerical advantage. And with their superior firepower, they might be able to outdo him. Big blast on the Chaos Lord. And he's a bit overextended here, trying to escape, but... Take it down, that's a lot of resources wasted there. You don't want to lose a Chaos Lord in that kind of environment, even if it's just to bring him back and attach him to a Space Marine squad. His bolt pistol is actually quite a sizable amount of damage. But now he's been lost. Will be regained for a while, I imagine, considering it's quite a big drain on green money. And he's about to get into tier 2 money, but no, he's going to go for that Chaos Lord. He doesn't care, man. He doesn't care. He's going for it. Tier 1 and done. That's what they are. Tier 2 at 25% for Vrax. Guardsman once again in the Chaos Space Marine base. Well, there are some shooting bits on his listing purse now. And I don't think they've got their health upgrade, or if they have, still won't do them all that much good. That's a lot of firepower coming in, but no. Chaos Armory for these Chaos Space Marines. If they got some heavy bolters on them, that would massively just help them with, with killing all these squishy guardsmen. In fact, yeah, if two squads, four heavy bolters each. Maybe if we're going for that upgrade where they can get four in a squad each, so that's eight in total. I mean, that would just be all the guardsmen dead as a doorknob. Quick as you like. Be a lot more efficient than having a Chaos Lord, I imagine. you are going for a Chaos Armory now. Tier 2 on the way. Going to get as close as possible. Trying to push them out of the heavy cover, but there is more heavy cover to be had. Grand squad charging in. We've got the priest. They've got the whole kit and caboodle now. But a fresh Chaos Lord, though. We zapped. Oh, that wasn't a, that wasn't a zap. That was a. Well, I mean, it was a zap. It was the, the general zap. The group zapping, if you will. Not the lightning strike. Targeted for individual models. There's less damage to him, but we've got the morale for a short while. And it's just back and forth here. Come as I'm inspiring the men, increasing. The overall damage output. I can't remember if it's accuracy or if it's raw DPS, but either way, it's same effect. We go for some Raptors now. It's a very odd build order indeed. Very odd. 
I mean, yeah, just, just, just some heavy balls, man. That's all you need. There's a couple of those bad boys. These guys will be brown bread. Going for Raptors instead. I mean, the Raptors will keep him on the move. Fair enough. I suppose that's more units to make use of. Going to go for Sacrificial Circle. I suppose anticipating some Chimeras. Yeah, there we go. Some Chimeras on the way. Plasma Pistols on the Aspiring Champions. There we go. Thank you, Heavy Bolters. Oh, my goodness. Ave Maria. Raptors going to jump straight in. I'm going to prevent this listing person from, going to go, from going down. So while the Raptors chase after them, the grenade launchers won't be going off. That will allow the heavy bottles to do a bit of firing. Although, ironically, actually, as the Raptors are chasing after them, it's knocking them out of out of range of these heavy bottles. So, <laughs> bit of an odd situation. We also have some cults over here taking care of these guardsmen. Or at least the guardsmen doing something to those cultists. Double camera is rocking on into the base. And I imagine that the Imperial Guard have just jumped inside this listening post. Yes, they have. Firing away. They won't last very long inside the listening post. We'll have to move out. There we go. Pushing over onto that side. But double Chimeras. I mean, thankfully, the Heretic is going to repair it, but will not be able to keep it in fighting fit, fresh fashion. One Princess out there. I'm able to get some Iconoclast Zealots out to help take care of those Chimeras. There we go, just a couple of heavy bolters. The Imperial Guard can't really get close to them. We'll need to... Ah, there we go, some heavy weapons teams. Playing the defensive game. Cultist slaying those Guardsmen down there. But double Chimeras inside the Chaos base. Not really been taken care of. We're going to see a Havoc Marine squad, but they are squad caps at the moment. Now, focusing fire with just the sheer amount of guardsmen that they have. Not sure what's happened over here. The Chaos Space Marines have died quite drastically. All of a sudden, it looked like as if the Chaos Space Marines were on quite the offensive, but actually... No, the Chad Guardsman. Oh, was it this? Oh no, you've only you've only just came out, so it can't have been you. You'll you'll, you'll be killing all these cultists down here. Raptor squad narrowly surviving death and destruction. The Havoc Marines for a missile launch or two. That is the Chimera's dealt with, but losing a sacrificial circle and two listing purse there. I also think, oh, I think a plasma generator, almost looks like a second plasma generator as well. What? A very costly engagement, all things considered. Command squad, catching eyes on the Havocs. But the Guardsmen, whilst I'm going to get some plasma guns, which will further... Just increase the amount of DPS they'll do to these heavy infantries. Oh, and a Basilisk as well, just for good measure. Yep, just shock and awe from the perspective of the Imperial Guard here. Yeah, okay, fair enough. The Chaos Space Marines might have some impressive firepower of their own. But, I mean, they can't do much firing if they're on their asses. I'm being... Blasted about by the grenade launchers and the basilisks. Fawn Princess, though. She will be able to avoid a lot of this knockback. Considering she's very jumpy when she's in close combat. Heavy weapons team on the back line, though. Should be able to chunk through the armor of all this infantry quite quickly. If left to its own devices, Chaos Space Marines will spot it there. Hopefully should focus fire on it. Got one missile launcher being fired into it. There we go. And a couple of bolts as well. While that's going on, it does give the, these regular Imperial Guardsmen plenty of time just to fire away. One squad wipe there. Have these Chaos Space Marines been given their War Gear Bionic Health upgrades? I don't think they have. 
Now, I don't think this infantry has been upgraded health-wise. I mean, correct, from, correct me if I'm wrong, there might have been an upgrade that, here that I haven't seen, but... Wouldn't normally see them die so quickly. Now, double basilisks. Got economies of 105 and 40. And 93 and 53. Or 98 and 53, sorry. So... Yeah, do with that information what you will. Sacrificial circle being replaced. Yeah, they will need some anti-vehicle stuff now. I mean, they've got the Havoc Marines, but they seem to die so easily. At least the pink covers might be able to teleport around the sides and get them down. But I don't know if that's going to be the answer here. Guardsmen, they've taken on listening post over on this side. will soon take a plasma generator down. While Custom King has had to dedicate his entire force down on this side to keep the Pale Guard locked down. Well, they've got... They could, I mean, they've got so many guards, they could just send one squad down over one side and just pressure other points of the map. Sacrificial circle. It's not been finished. Ah, oh, it's not been finished in... They're going to go for a machine pit. It's a Chaos Vindicator. That's what you want in this situation. Chaos Vindicator would be the answer to a lot of this, a lot of this guardman nonsense. Or maybe a Hell Talon or two to take care of the Basilisks. You may as well even just cancel that sacrificial circle, actually. Unless you plan to get a Chaos Sorcerer out, but I don't think that that's going to be much used here. You have money to buy things. You've got plenty of green money. Going to increase the vehicle cap. Yeah, so that's that tells me it's going to be a Vindicator. Basilisks laying siege. They've got the long-range scanner from the Imperial Guard HQ. Murder is my fate. The class zealots is my looking to recap things. We'll see these guardsmen with their plasma guns. Give the old sniff and blur a bit of a go. Let's charge in. Reese going one to one. Being stepped all over by the fawn princess. Dropping his chainsaw, which has been left on. Very dangerous indeed. But such is the way of war. You finished your vehicle cap increase. What's coming out of the machine pit? Mr. Custom King hasn't quite got the money for things as he is constantly reinforcing all his boys. Havoc's a 70 blue. 20 more expensive than your regular old Space Marine. And they are just losing more and more models as they go along. Trying to attack on multiple sides. They've been spread so thin, they can't really win. And we got the Vindicator comes out. Will this single attack be able to change the course of battle? Now, if they can avoid this heavy weapons team, maybe. They'll blast these guys back. Use Havoc Squad to kill the heavy weapons team. It's all a possibility. It's going to require some really tactical, um, how would one say it? Very tactical unit placement here. Three years. <laughs> there we go, the Curse Vindicator is out. And about... One shot! Almost wipes out an entire squad. Yep, there we go, that's one way to do it. And maybe this is what the Doctor ordered. I mean, they've got the heavy weapons team here, but... Not quite in range of that Chaos Vindicator. Maybe a couple of Scout Sentinels are what you want. There we go, they've spotted him. And actually, able to resist the incoming damage quite nicely. It's all down to, can he kill him? Basilisks also have been able to fire away. Not really focusing on that too much. Yeah, the Chaos Vindicator. Unable to win against the heavy weapons team. Not sure why it was sent in a 1v1 kind of scenario against it. Could have been pulled back, but we'll just buy another one. He's got the money for it. And do, do the Imperial Guard have the money? Oh, they've got money for it. That's fine. Look at this tier 3. Doesn't matter if they're knocked back a bit. They can just get a couple of Lehman Russes out in a couple of minutes. So there's a very limited window of opportunity for Custom King here. Very limited window indeed. Chaos Lord. 
being zapped. Vrax throwing out a very cheeky early GG. I mean, don't wrong, he's probably won this. In all fairness, he probably has, but you never know. Front squad keeping himself immortal. Yeah, so I think we're custom king. I mean, is Chaos Rush in the early game? Wage stand right, okay, no plasma generator, just as many car space beams as humanly possible. You know what, on a map like this, fair play to him. Was a, was a fairly decent idea. But then when he got into tier two, he had all this infantry, had the Chaos Armory, could have really, you know, like, so, you know, when you get into tier two, some people transition into vehicle play, go for Chaos, you can go for some demon stuff going on. But well, if you've got all the infantry, you may as well double down. Upgrade all your, all your boys with Chaos Armoury stuff. But we didn't really see that many upgrades on the Chaos Space Marines, I don't think. Could have seen a little bit more dedication to them. And then, of course, then if they start dying, then transition into something else. But I think it would have been a much more natural way to go that way than anything else. But, hey, oh, the Chaos Vindicator's still out. Still a chance. Oh, never mind. Oh, there's critical locations. I've yet to be even sniffed at by Chaos here. So that is that. Imperial Guard just holding firm. Ignoring all the, sh the Chaos shenanigans before coming out of big, bad Imperial Guard squads and a couple of Basilisks to boot. But hey, well, thank you guys for sending those games in. If you want to support the channel, have a look at the old Patreon. One pound of gets you one extra game a week. And there is also a Discord where Discord things happen. As for Mr. Lunchark, pleasure is always never short. And I'll see you in a bit. Peace.